So this is a 2024 Range Rover Sport SV Edition 1. And we're going to have a look at this design because I don't know what Range Rover did with the interior. What happened here? It's still the same Range Rover Sport as the 2023 model year. This is just the SV, but they changed the interior to something that I'm not personally a fan of. We're going to talk about that when we look at this car from a Photoshop, in Photoshop from a front side and rear. Also the interior uh, compare it to the normal Range Rover Sport. But before we do that, let's have a look at this article from Car and Driver. Let's see what this Range Rover Sport SV Edition 1 is all about. So when the third generation Range Rover Sport launched in 2023, it did so without a high power model. However, this year the first edition is gone and the Range Rover Sport instead does some chest thumping with the new SV Edition 1. And uh, the front end is it's an interesting design because I honestly don't think which one I think look the sportiest. The normal Range Rover Sport look uh, already very... It almost looks like an SV in the front end. This treatment that they have here, uh, what this reminds me of are these uh, plastic six-pack ring... Uh, packaging things. I don't know why it, it, that's the first thing that came out because it feels like it's stretchy like this. You can just uh, stretch them out until they break in the front end. But it's it's a it's a pretty good looking front end. I, I'm not so sure about this though. I'm gonna have to experiment a little bit with that in Photoshop later on. So this is the full on uh, max performance variant akin to the SVR in the previous uh, generation Range Rover Sport. In place of the old SVR supercharged 5 liter V8, there is now a new twin turbocharged 4.4 liter V8. Is it from BMW maybe? With 626 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque, which is, as you can see, uh, a substantial amount more than the than the previous generation. It's also lighter, the, the, the engine itself. It is smaller, it makes sense that it's lighter. And they say that it will hit 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds on its way to a top speed of 180 miles per hour. It's a pretty fast SUV, this thing. You have the rest of the lineup uh, with the inline six, uh, the P360 SC, P400 Dynamic and the P550, I made a review, I think, I I, I'm pretty sure I had the P400 uh, for a review, it was a while ago, you can go and check it out on the Sketch Monkey channel if you want to do that. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil what it is, that, what, what's going on, if, you, if, you, if you've already compared it to the Range Rover Sport 2023 model year, you know what it is I'm going to bring up here in, in Photoshop later on, but I'm going to not talk about it right now because <laughs> I'm going to retain myself as always and just talk about the, the, the facts here. So we have 23 inch wheels that are either alloy or if you happen to have an extra just laying around $10,150 somewhere, you can add the carbon fiber wheels, which shaves a claim 20 pound per corner and they look really great. I, I do love the carbon fiber wheels for $10,000 though. It gets a little a, a little tricky there, but Karma Ceramic Brakes, you can get those as well for $9,000. So as you starting to figure out here, you can add uh, a, a bunch of options to your Range Rover Sport SV and uh, it will be a lot, uh, you know, more than the, than the base price of $180,000. You have all-wheel steering as well as, um, I'm not sure if that's an option or, or standard. And it sits 0.4 inches lower than the standard Sport or 1 inch lower in SV mode. So it hunkers down if you, f for some reason, decide to take your Range Rover Sport SV to the track, which which uh, is probably not going to happen. And here you can see details of the carbon fiber wheels. They look great. They just look fantastic. And I, I understand why they charge ten thousand uh, dollars for these wheels because they're not. You know, I'm not sure how difficult this is to manufacture, but it looks pretty complex to me. Now, actually, uh, this article actually mentions what I'm going to bring up later on when we talk about this interior. So inside the cabin, the body and sole seats, the bass base, is the mark key item and an SV exclusive. These high back buckets have four transduce transducers in the seat back which transmit music vibrations. So the whole seat vibrates when you listen to music. Um, interesting. Uh, shift paddles with a see-through upper portion and illuminated edges. That's, that's a pretty cool idea. I have to give uh, Land, Land Rover some credit for that. I have, I've never thought of that, to have the paddles illuminate. Everything else is illuminated. Uh, all the, you know, non-important stuff, the buttons and stuff in interior and cars. But the paddles are a pretty important feature. So you kind of want to see them properly at night too. So that's a great idea. However, the center dash is unblemished by knobs or button of any kind. Not even a volume knob. It's now a touch slider. But first, 
you must tap on the volume spot. Why would we have a, such a complicated procedure to change the volume? Why not just have a dial there? Now, now you have to tap the, the, the volume spot or whatever that is and then, then you have to use a slider. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Then you have temperature adjustment. It's, it's also the same scenario. Even the terrain response, response dial is gone. Uh, sadly, the, the roughly uh, 600 units headed uh, this way are now sold out. However, it will return for 2025. Not sure if you're going to do an SVR further down the line. But here we go. Let's jump into Photoshop here. Let's uh, see what this car is all about. So up top, we do have the, the, the norm, the standard Range Rover Sport. And honestly, when I look at this car, uh, I do think the Range Rover Sport, this, the, the front end of the Sport, look better than the SV and I'm going to let you know why because look at this lower section here on the I'm having the right tool here the brush not the right brush here we go so we have this section down here this lower piece of the of the normal Range Rover if we have the proper 23s wheels on this I think it looks better than the uh, SV for the simple reason that this line up top we have we don't have this uh, you know plastic six pack packaging design that I that I feel the new SV has. This looks way better because we have this black piece cutting off this uh, connection to the top part of the body color piece. So we have a separation between the lower section and the the top section right here with this black piece. And I think this black piece is an important graphic detail in the front end. Uh, for the uh, the Range Rover uh, Sport and as you can see we don't have that piece in the Range Rover SV because now we have this just crashing in to this top part with this area and this does not look sophisticated enough this transition from this piece into the top part is not sophisticated enough for me to put on a Range Rover Sport specifically if it costs 180,000 dollars I need to have something else there that has a has a better transition between the two parts and I think that is what the Range Rover Sport does much do do much better than the Range Rover uh, Sport SV I'm also not a huge fan these are all carbon fiber you can have all this in carbon fiber carbon fiber up here you can have this in carbon fiber if you want to do that and I'm not so sure it, it just looks it, it looks like a simpler front end than the uh, Range Rover Sport however the Range Rover Sport is not a complex design it's still very clean but it just feels like a more complete design in my opinion we also have some uh, I'm not sure if these are the fog lights down here I can't remember when I reviewed it what kind of lights these were but their overall front end they look very similar there are just some tiny changes on the uh, SV that I think does, does not help this design it still doesn't look bad I mean it looks very clean in the front end both of these designs but me personally I definitely prefer the regular Range Rover Sport and this is the one I would personally buy between these two because you can still have the big V8 in there. Looking at the side view we don't have a lot of changes here in the side view we have a couple of details uh, that, that kind of makes sense if you look at the front and the rear for example this uh, Mercedes C-Class vibe that we have going on here with this outlet I hope this is functional it probably is because maybe this is a little bit wide I doubt this is wider than the regular Range Rover Sport it doesn't look wider but other than that we still have the typical Range Rover Sport styling with this sloping sharp roof line and sharp corner up here and two-tone as well coming back to the uh, previous generation Range Rover Sport as well I do love this line because we have a connection here going into the side right here and then have a little bit of a connection that's all I'm asking for that tiny little uh, touch of line at the rear section right here if we zoom in this piece this has a connection now to the rest of the body but we don't have the same connection in the front end like we have with this little piece on the front end of the regular Range Rover Sport other than that it's pretty much the same and again if we look at the wheels here are these the uh, these are probably the carbon fiber wheels and if I compare the design of these two wheels I do think I prefer again the regular uh, Range Rover Sport wheels and in this case I would think that they probably look good in black as well because it looks like we do have some silver pieces on here not sure what wheel options uh, Range Rover have for their designs but I would probably pick something else than both of these wheels because I'm not a huge fan of either of them but if I had to pick one probably gonna be the normal Range Rover Sport up here now looking at the rear end here we do have some changes and then we're of course we're gonna look at the interior and uh, you gotta try to figure out why they made the decisions 
um, they made for the interior. But first of all, look at the rear end here. Not again, a very similar design, beautiful design, this new Range Rover overall. I do love this design because it's so clean. Everything has nice chamfers to it, a couple of small chamfers around the entire car, but other than that, everything sits flush with the bodywork, and I've said this for a couple of years now, that this is the trend that we're going into, where we have, for example, the taillights, every, all the key graphics, taillights and headlights, sitting completely flush with the rest of the body. We have a clear separation here. I do like this line, it's an important line because it separates the top part from the lower section down here. Now looking at the new SV down here, the biggest change is obviously going to be as in the exhaust pipes because we have quad, quad pipes. I would call these bazooka tailpipes, they're round, they're relatively big in this case. But again, the design changes uh, do not motivate me to spend the extra money for the SV and not even the power because the standard Range Rover Sport is still very powerful. I did not even have the most powerful version. I had the 4, 395 horsepower version, the P400, and that was by itself already very quick. And here you can see again this outlet that we have on the, on the bumper, which then ruins this connection again. This connection from the side does not have a connection in the SV anymore, which we do have right here. Again, I do think the normal Range Rover Sport is just a more beautiful design. But the biggest, the, the biggest change and the biggest reason why I would pick the 2023 Range Rover Sport over the 2024 is look at this interior. So up top we do have the 2023, down low we do have the 2024. Can you see what is missing here? Some, some key features that, that, that was just perfectly laid out in the 2023 model. Those are obviously these dials that we have for the climate control settings. And I love this design. I love the in user interface that Range Rover Land Rover has. I also reviewed the Defender recently and I said in the title of the video, the 2024 Range Rover uh, Land Rover Defender has the best interior of any SUV because they have a very clear use for every single button. So this button in the 2023 model, this has several options. You can push this down and you uh, control the temperature of the, the ventilated and cooled seats. Or if you just rotate it without pushing it down, you're gonna have the uh, regular temperature AC controls. You also control the fan speed with these dials. And it just looks way more beautiful to have at least a little bit of physical buttons in this dash. Not so sure about this integration of this screen. It feels like it's just floating here right on the dash, but it's fine. It's not the worst integration I've seen. The steering wheel looks fantastic and so does the gauge cluster up here. I'm glad at least that Range Rover did not change out the gauge cluster and they still have the housing for it here in the 2024 model year. So that looks great, but look at this. It's completely empty now. And where did these functions go? If we zoom in here, you can see that we have a 20, 22, uh, 22 degrees right here, which means to me that all these beautiful functions that we have here now has transformed and yes, they become, they become part of the software in the screen itself, which to me is a huge mistake by uh, Land Rover. And it's not just the interior for the 2024 model year. Again, the, the reason why I would pick the 2023 uh, regular Range Rover Sport over the SV is first of all the price is insanely high for the SV and I also think that the exterior and the interior design is simply just better in the 2023 model. 